What is up, everybody, and welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner. Joining me as he always does for another three things post-game podcast, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, as the people can tell, you're joining us from Pittsburgh for this one. And we're going to talk Carolina's 41-24 victory over the Panthers here in a second. This show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Big thank you to them. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But AJ, let's go ahead and, and dive into this one as Carolina improves to 4-0 and and Pitt drops to 1-3 and with the win for the Tar Heels. So I want to start with the offense um, because if, uh, it, it was an interesting game. Carolina defensively didn't start off great. I was a lot of – I was going back and forth with people on Twitter and message boards that were kind of overreacting about, in, in my opinion, about the defense and how they played early. It wasn't you know letting up the early touchdowns on the two opening drives. But offensively on the on the – on the other side of the ball, you know, scored four touchdowns on their first five possessions against the pit defense. That was ranked what number five in total defense coming into this one. I know um, hadn't played the most hardest opponents, but still coming into this game one and two with a really good defense and an offense that was so, so, so you have to give Carolina a lot of credit there because what they were able to do offensively early on in this game was crucial. And then eventually it turns into this game in the second half that, you know, it's the fourth quarter and the game's essentially over. So four touchdowns, first five possession as I think that's where we need to start AJ. So, so for someone who was there, walk me through that. Well, Pitt has NFL guys on defense, certainly in the secondary. And I asked Mac about that. And and in my question, I said, you know, I, I mentioned the fact that they were mixing it up and Caroline did mix it up. They mixed it up. Well, Drake, some of us in the press box were like, man, Drake's only thrown the ball 10 times. He's only got nine completions, but he had all this yardage and they were all like impact completions for the most part. Uh, they would pick up and convert third downs or like the flea flicker when, when he got pulverized. And he said that he actually kind of alluded to it being maybe a little bit of a dirty play. And uh, his ear was ringing like crazy. We were wondering, we we didn't know if it was a neck or his head. He got kind of like on. hit in the side of the head. But he, his, his, ear like was was ringing. Yeah. his ear was ringing for a long time. And um, so, but he, he said he didn't even know Copa ever made the catch or not. So I mean, his grittiness is off yeah. the charts. We could have, we could do a thousand minute pod on that right there. But, uh, but I think his grittiness was a part of it because he got hit the first play. One of the first plays he gets hit, uh, questionable call. They called it a fumble on the field. They overruled it. I don't know. He got hit and then started to throw. There was no no receiver there. That's a rule I think that you can debate whether uh, if the throw starts after being hit, what is it really? So, and by the way, it would have been six sacks if that would have been, if that Mm -hmm. uh, call on the field would have stayed instead of five sacks, which I deal with in the five takeaways, by the way. Um, but the offense was really good that they just make plays. J.J. Jones was fantastic, had a career high, 117 yards. Uh, the fact that Nate McCollum didn't have his first reception until two minutes and 19 seconds left in the first half mm. tells you something. And the fact that this offense was able to hum while standing on the sideline for a long time. You know, like in baseball, you get a really good starting pitcher out there, and all of a sudden, the offense has a long inning where there's a couple mm-hmm. of pitchers that change the opposition. They score four runs, and it's a 25-minute inning. You kind of worry about the pitcher arm getting a little bit tight. With the offense, this is a rhythm offense, right? And Pitt had the ball forever. Carolina's second possession didn't start until uh, the second quarter. And they had 10 snaps on their first two because they went three and out, I guess, maybe in their second possession. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, they they didn't have a lot of snaps. So there wasn't – it was kind of hard to get into a groove. But but they went out there and they were very businesslike on offense. And the thing that I really, really like about what we've seen from Drake through four games now, more than we saw a year ago, and maybe we've had to see it more because – this club isn't popping the same way last year's did because they played a different level of competition out of the game. But Drake is really managing the game well. I was listening to Roddy Jones on the radio last week. The, and he does ACC stuff, ACC Network and on the radio. And he was talking about how he's marveling at Drake's ability to manage the game. And that's what pro scouts are saying. They know he's got all his other tools. The next phase is can you manage a game? And I thought Drake did a brilliant job managing the game tonight and got them through some of those drives and Pitt looked kind of helpless. So mm-hmm. once Carolina's defense started to blow up after Pitt's first two possessions, I never thought the game was in doubt. I, I didn't think it was a name the score situation. 
But I thought Carolina was going to get in the 40s, quite frankly. They left more points in the field. And I think oh, that's yeah. something we'll address we'll address here in the open week where this club is 4-0 and and the offense has been pretty good, but it could be so much better. And their efficiency rating is going to be high. But I think the, the wonderful news for UNC about this is, again, the offense is about here, given where it can be. And I think it's out of the screen where it eventually can be. Mm-hmm. So – to do that in this place, when you have to generate your own energy, it was a terrible crowd. It was crappy weather. Yeah, it was a real, against a team that you would think, man, boy, if it's terrible weather, then Pitt has an advantage, right? Mm-hmm. No, they couldn't hang with Carolina. Carolina's no. just got too many weapons. They're 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 in a well-oiled machine when things are working right, especially when they have an absolute stud at quarterback. And Drake was a stud tonight. And he, he didn't really get much in the run game, but they got enough here and there. And um, we got NFL guys on their side. And they gave up. I don't know what the total yardage was, but um, Carolina was well into the 400-yard area and very well could have scored 50 points tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, 100%. percent should have. Quite should have scored 50 points tonight. Yeah, no, they were they were really good tonight. Yeah, you mentioned on the ground, just 77 yards for, for Carolina on the ground tonight. Uh, defensively did hold them to 307 yards for Pitt. So a, a good overall day. Carolina finished with around 373. So Drake May, 22 for 30, 296 yards, one touchdown. And again, the left-handed throw as well, which is – Getting all the hype right now. If you go on Twitter, it's about the only thing yeah. you can see on the on Mac, you can see timeline. It's pretty amazing. Mac told him when he came off the field after that play, "You're going to be on Sports Center." Yeah, oh, it was an amazing. Like, the play. top, top two. That's the top play. This the count, whatever. And Drake's like, "Here's my coach, this Hall of Fame paraphrasing, this Hall of Fame legend, and this is what he's thinking about when I come off the field after making that play." I asked Drake, I said, did you channel some of your basketball instincts on that one? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're dribbling and, and the guy is open. You do these left-handed entry pass because you're supposed to play both hands in basketball. And he said, yeah. He said a lot of things. A lot of the questions afterward were about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he, he amazes all the time. Yeah, he it was does, an man. incredible play. Yeah. But I still think that, that throw to cop Copenhagen on the fleet, he knew the dude was coming and he got pulverized. Oh, yeah, I mean, he did. He got popped and to stay in the pocket like he that. He got popped a lot tonight, man. I mean, yeah. if you talk about some of the things that would be cleaned up, they've now given up nine sacks since the opener. I know. So, yeah, I thought offensive four, line four was five. poor for – Large and they haven't run the ball the last two weeks. They haven't run the ball against these two power Mm -hmm. five teams they play. Remember, I told people about Omari, and they all said, Oh, Omarian's the answer. Well, he went for 234 against G5. Mm -hmm. And in the last two games, in the the three games against power five teams, he's 47 carries for 149 yards. That's Mm -hmm. 3.2 or something like that a carry. Yeah. So they need to do, and he had a 26 yard run tonight. Mm-hmm. So they need to do a better job. They still have so much to improve on, but I'll tell you what, like the, going along here on this, on this part, but when they, they had to score, they had to move the ball, they had to mix it up and they did it. Yeah. So yeah. when they end up being even more consistent, then like I've said all along, I think this team can win a lot of games. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a ton of room for improvement too. I completely agree with that, which I think is a, positive thing for for lack of a better word so moving on to the to the second thing i want to talk about so i think it has to be elijah hudgy two interceptions today one punt return i tweeted i'm like man i don't remember the last time i saw we we had a punt return tonight for carolina and a kick return for pittsburgh i can't remember the last game i've seen a punt return and a kick return in the same game especially a kick return because they've essentially eliminated those from, from college football is amazing and a block punt. Do that. yeah and a block punt yeah great point too and just a crappy a lot of weird sky stuff. and a crappy sky kick and yeah, just a, a lot of punt. weird stuff in this game tonight in a lot of ways but it was the it was sky just, kick was a muff punt that pittsburgh recovered that i can't remember who it was for carolina but he just like flew right over the ball he was trying to get it but he just couldn't stop himself and, yeah yeah but, there was a lot to clean up on the special team side tonight. When yeah, I asked back, I was, said, are you concerned? I said, on special teams, are you concerned? And before I can get it out, he's like, yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he's got a lot of habit. So you're going to let him have it Tuesday in practice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were poor tonight. Besides, you know, I thought Noah Burnett was good. But besides that, special teams had a lot of room for improvement. Didn't do themselves any favors tonight. But a positive light on special teams. And for Carolina, as a, as a defense as well, was Elijah Hushy. Big time player, man. I mean, he really is. And he, he continues to impress. He continues to show why Carolina went after him so hard in the portal. And just feels like the first kind of playmaker slash lockdown. I know he plays the the star position a lot as well, but kind of playmaker slash lockdown corner that Carolina's had in a long time. That's what it feels like to me. And 
again, when you can also do it on special teams and return punts like that and make an impact like that, I mean, the value he's added to this team and to this defense, man, is it's big time. And it's 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 cool to see too from from his perspective. He's an impact player. And very quickly, a sidebar, it's, uh, I can see the cameras flaring up a lot. Part of it's the lighting in the stadium, but I've had – we have an open date this week, so we get to work on my camera. So yeah, we've had some issues with AJ's camera. I don't – It, it, we, it I, creeped up the last couple of weeks. So we're we've tried try everything it, but, you could think of with, with that. But it's on steroids works, so. because of the lighting in the stadium. There's always – in always something. And I'm – I'm in like a uh, coach's booth or something. I, don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just like the glare. It's something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's all We've had stuff. issues it's with probably, it. Look, if people see me not as if – if I'm not as clear when it happens, it, that means the video is enhanced. So, <laughs> that's, that's, so, yeah, he's an impact player. Yeah. And um, that was his first touchdown since he picked one back, picked one off and ran back at East Tennessee State a couple of years ago. He never returned one for a score at East Tennessee State. He said tonight that he, he returned one to the two-yard line. But, you know, I I thought he was going to return one earlier. He had a 29-yard return in midfield, which Sebastian Cheeks had a great block on that play. And um, you kind of felt like, you know, there was something there. that were Pitt just didn't do a very good job in his lane coverage on that, and just like the other one. And uh, it was very similar. The last time Carolina had a punt return for a touchdown was Daz Newsom at Syracuse in 2018. And I was sitting in almost the exact same spot in the press box at the Carrier Dome as I was tonight. And it almost looked identical. Mm-hmm. One turn, go left and dart. And that was like a 50 yarder as well. So um, he's a sensational player. He's a guy that totally has a feel for the game. His instincts, he's dripping with instincts. He's dripping with football IQ. He's dripping with athletic ability. He's dripping with big play ability. Uh, He's dripping with a guy who absolutely embraces the moment without thinking much about the moment. He's not Mm -hmm. phased. For a dude whose family could only watch him on ESPN Plus before he got to Carolina, which he's talked about a couple of times, he plays like he's been on this stage, on the biggest stage of ACC or Power 5 games for years. It's incredible how mature he is. It's incredible how unflappable he is. And he he is an NFL player. And whether he goes this the next year or the year after, because he can play two years at Carolina, a Carolina fan should just appreciate the time that he's at UNC because he is as good a defensive back as they've had in a long time. Because mm-hmm. there's nothing he doesn't do very well. There, there's no weakness in his game. And you saw it tonight because you don't get to see the vision if you're watching the ball at the time, if you're not, if because you don't watch the defense, you don't watch guys like him react. I sometimes sit up there and watch guys react. I have that luxury of, of the vantage point that I have. So you can see his vision sometimes, but you saw it on that punt return. You saw it on both returns, but especially the one for the score. And then the last interception, I asked him, I said, Did you think you were taking that in? And he said for a second, and then he saw the pit defender coming over and he tried to juke him a little bit and he got brought down. But again, he's a guy thinking scoring. Mm-hmm. He's 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 thinking exclamation mark with everything he does because he's so good. Drake does it, Cedric Gray does it. There are three guys on this football team that are phenomenal college football players, Drake, Cedric, and Elijah. And Elijah was at his best tonight. He was sensational. He is such a good player. Yeah, he is. He's he's been fantastic and such a good addition for this this defense and for this team as a whole. Because like you said, he does make plays. He's got charisma out there too. He's got a little bit of a swagger yeah. and confidence yeah, to him that does. I think is a bit probably a bit infectious when he's making plays like that too. So again, really, really good. And if you can if you throw in that special teams element too, you don't you don't need that from Huzzy. Like you don't like do what you do on defense, man. We appreciate that. That's what, what is, is Carolina perspective. That's great. But if you throw that in too, I mean, that's just the icing on top of the cake. So yeah, he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. And it was absolutely fantastic tonight for North Carolina. Before we move on to the last thing, AJ, real quickly, stay tuned for a word from our sponsor on this one, Underdog Fantasy. I'm very excited to announce our new partnership with Underdog Fantasy. We decided to partner with Underdog because it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports and it's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Now, Underdog Fantasy has a lot to offer, including their Pick'em game. And in Pick'em, you pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. It's so easy to play. Just pick two to five stats of your favorite players and choose whether they'll go higher or lower. You can 20x your money by going five for five. They also have a best ball mania. If you think you know football, definitely need to check this one out. This year's best ball mania has 15 million in total prizes up for grabs with the winner taking home $3 million. So sign up today with promo code HEAL and get your first deposit doubled by up to 
$100. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with promo code HEEL, H-E-E-L, to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. You must be 18 plus and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms do apply. And if you are concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Back to the show. Big thank you to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this show. Um, AJ, last thing we're going to talk about, as we tend to do on these, uh, kind of talking about what this win means for the Tar Heels. 4-0, first time since 1997. Who was the head coach in 1997? His name's Mac Brown, same coach as the Tar Heels right now. So big start to the season for the Tar Heels, a really good start to the season for North Carolina. That kind of goes without saying. I think if you ask a lot of Carolina fans two months ago, if, if Carolina was that they thought their team was going to start 4-0, I don't, I don't think you would have got a lot of answers of yes because of the, you know, what we've talked about a lot with some of the skepticism coming into this season. But I literally I tweeted it. You literally can't ask for much more. You're undefeated through four games. You're going into a bye week. You've got a very winnable schedule coming up. Defense has played well. It also has room for improvement. Offense has played well, but also has room for improvement. This is a team that's far from the finished article yet. It's still undefeated right now. And I think that's a big, big plus. So what do you think this win ultimately means for Carolina? And I think, again, I'll add this too. I think the bye week is coming at a really good time as well. It is coming at a good time. They're a little bit banged up. They should get Gavin Blackwell back. Should get Willie Lampkin back. That'll be, that'll uh, they, be they, they need him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he needs to be on the field. The offensive line, uh, they, they need Willie Lampkin. He's one of their best offensive linemen, so they'll probably have him back for Syracuse. And what's interesting is the next time they play is against Syracuse, and who does Syracuse have next? Clemson at home. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think the things are setting up nicely for this team, especially since they have so much room to grow, and they know it. And the vibe I got – Today, when they were three and zero last year, and they were three and zero over Florida and M App and Georgia State, they kind of felt good about it. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Yeah, man, we're three and zero." Now, I, I sensed no satisfaction at all at four and zero tonight. We talked to Cedric, Drake, JJ, and Elijah, and also the head coach. Eh, I mean, by the way, he reminded us he was forty five when last time it happened. <laughs> forty five years old, long time ago. So, man. I sensed no satisfaction. I mean, they, they, the, the, all of them, we got so much more room to grow. We can be so much better. And they can. It's not just player speak, it's real. We've identified that here for a couple of weeks. You look at each game and you could carve out segments and say, man, they can get a lot better than that. But, but the, but the thing that should encourage Carolina fans is when they have those stretch, excuse me, when they have those stretches, you don't look at it and say, God, they got no answers for that. It's going to flare up every game and they got no answers for it. They do. They have answers for everything. They really do. Unless they lose a starting linebacker, they got answers for, or, and Drake, they got an answer for everything. They really yeah. do. Yeah. And and they, they have, they have the means to, to fix all of these areas. They do. And that should be extremely encouraging because when I did those drops before the season started, I broke down the season into three segments. The first one we just completed here, first four games, I said, if they can get through that stretch 4-0, look at what they got coming up. Syracuse at home, Miami at home, Virginia at home, at Georgia Tech, Campbell at home, Duke at home. Now, Miami's better than people thought so far. Been really good so far. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a happen. war. Duke is really good. I watched a lot of that game against UConn today. I know it's UConn, but, man, they went up there, and they did what a good team's supposed to. They punked them. Mm-hmm. They and Miami both punked their opponents on the road. Syracuse had a really good win at Purdue, but Purdue lost today. Maybe they're not any good, but um, but Syracuse is still going to be a solid team. They got a running quarterback. Georgia Tech picked up a win at Wake Forest, so you know I think this middle stretch is a little tougher than we thought. Maybe the first four weren't as tough as we thought. It's it would possible be. too. Yeah, the fact, that, the fact that Carolina's playing C and C plus performances, although I think South Carolina I might give an A minus there. Yeah, it was and they're still games. winning these, and they're still winning these games. It means that they're four zero, but to them, they're just—it's just four games out of the way. Mm-hmm. I really believe that that's how they view this thing. They're, no one's gonna—they're not gonna arrive back in Chapel Hill to a parade. No one's gonna greet them at the airport with balloons and gifts and stuff like that because they would reject it if they did. Because I don't think they feel like they've done that much, other than they've played four games where they've been really good at times, and they've gotten four solid wins. 
that I think will still, uh, this is a solid win here, given the circumstances. The computer won't recognize the circumstances of this, but people who understand football and the, the mental uh, disposition of teams and, and the human nature aspect will recognize this as a good win. And, and they, they've they been able to put that together. And they're like, okay, we're good. You know, we, we, what's next? We got to go for the next thing. I, I don't, I think this team believes it can realistically play for something very, very significant and, and well into November and mm-hmm. Clemson losing today kind of opened the door for someone to, to assume the second spot in the league, so to speak. And I still think that Florida state can be beaten by a couple of teams in this league outside of the team that they beat today. So I think what it means is that there's a lot of football left and this team should get a lot better and they are nowhere close to satisfied. They're on a mission. Yeah. Feels like old that. dudes. Feels like that. old dudes. You know, they're, I don't know how else I can say it. they're excited and they're happy, but I think this thing's behind them quickly. Mm-hmm. They're going to, you're supposed to put it, put it to bed Sunday night and move on to the next one. They don't have a next one next week. I still think these guys put it behind them tomorrow. Yeah. And they go into the open day looking to get better because the coaches are going to tell them, remind them on Tuesday, okay, here's this checklist of things you guys need to get better at. And if you want to make that state of mission come true, you must address these things this week. Mm -hmm. And that's what they'll do during the open week. So I think what it means is that they're a good team. They're four and O team and they have a lot to play for and they should get better. And I think they will get better. I agree. I think they will. I think you summed it up really well. And I think if you're a Carolina fan, you gotta be feeling pretty dang good right now. I'll tell you that for sure. Cause four and going into the bye week 41, 24 win over a team over a program in a place that you struggled to win games at, you gotta be feeling pretty good about that. So Carolina again, improving to four and pit drop into one in three and obviously Carolina one and oh in the conference, which is super important as well. We'll go ahead and wrap it up now. AJ, you got work to do. I know we got to go ahead and head on out of here. I've been Jacob Turner. Lights He's been hours. Andrew Jones. Yep, it's almost two a.m. over here, which you know we yeah. do it for you guys. So make sure and we're like going to do it. And we're recording a drop in just a second. Yeah, make sure you guys like the video below, man, because we be working way into the night tonight. We do it for you guys. We don't do it for us. Trust me. So appreciate y'all watching. As always, keep it locked to TarHillIllustrated.com as well for all your post game coverage from tonight's game. We appreciate you watching as always. See you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.